Hello, I'm Nick Majerison, and this is Top Med Talk. Today's Top Med Talk is a roundtable highlight. It's called Optimum Optimization, and it's a conversation about the dichotomy between public health, concerns about public health, how far we should optimise patients, and then, of course, the fee-for-service world that a lot of our listeners live in, where, frankly, hospitals would like people to be attending and having operations because that's how they make their money. It's a fascinating conversation. It's a controversial area, and we'd really welcome your feedback. Listen, I'm going to give you the email address right at the end of the podcast. I want you to send us an email and tell us your thoughts about how healthcare is best funded, in your opinion. We're planning a show on that in the future, and we'd like some thoughts from the collective mind that listened to Top Med Talk. Before that, though, let's have a listen to the podcast. It features Desiree Chapel, Monty Mython, Dr. Lee Fleischer, Chair of Anesthesiology and Critical Care at the University of Pennsylvania, and Vicky Morton, DNP and Director of Clinical and Quality Outcomes at Providence Anesthesiology Associates University of South Carolina. Top bed talk. So I'm curious, Desiree, because it's one thing to optimize them to get them through surgery. True. It's another, which is what I'm hearing you guys doing and what I'm trying to convince my own center they should do is optimize them, period. Right. Mm-hmm. To get them and, through life. Right. right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not to have surgery. And it'll last <laughs> 30 days to 90 days. Yeah. Is that... Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote some of these guidelines. It was always, can you get them to 90, to, you know, out of the hospital? If you fix anemia, you fix pre-diabetes, you stop people smoking, you help their sleep apnea. If they never have surgery, that's, that's not wasted effort. It's is not. It? That's good medicine. medicine. And that's population health. But then you do have less surgeries, potentially, and then you have potentially a group of individuals that Like a hospital. Not, yeah. <laughs> so the, it's so got to change, the, isn't it? It's got to so change. It's a transition. So the problem is that we're in this world where, and, and Vicky and I had a great discussion, where many hospitals are still making their money in fee-for-service. Yeah. So they don't want us to cancel cases. They don't want less surgery, although they don't want bad outcomes, really bad outcomes. So the question you know, I have is, how do you start the conversation today to say, if you are looking better, and I understand your hospital is looking better, mm-hmm. how do you support us increasingly? Because if not, why should we do this and lose money? You don't have to necessarily gain but you can't lose right yeah i mean those are conversations that have been there have been many many with administration and it's um you know continually just going over the cost savings the financial analysis Mm -hmm. talking about what's best for the patient i mean i'm really fortunate where i work and even though i work for an anesthesia group we have a fantastic partnership with our hospital system and great team of collaborative individuals and they do see the benefit and I think they are willing. But why aren't they paying for part of you? Again, I've been in this role now just over a year and really when I came in, the program was very small and um, now it's huge and you know, six, seven hospitals participating, they're getting it and they've made it a corporate initiative and they're coming around with that. So, so like many hospitals, we have an ERAS collaborative that's a surgeon and anesthesiologist are running and I've already started socializing with the system that it is very expensive to not have them in the OR. Mm -hmm. I'll pay for it today but there's going to be a point in time. I mean one of the points I made during my presentation today is that going forward we have to start changing the narrative. I mean when URS first came and we were trying to you know it's all about length of stay it's all about cost savings we're still in a fee-for-service world. That's the reality right now. And so that's not, that's not the narrative that you need to have with you know, key stakeholders. It needs to be some of these other issues. And well, Won't ultimately patient power, the consumer, the, uh, the customer get a grip on all of this? Won't that be the ultimate uh, conclusion to the whole thing? The, um, you, know, you mentioned, Lee, that if we at any stage see PBPM... PBPM, I think I wrote down here, written per, down some. We should. We per should. beneficiary per month. Per beneficiary per month. Is so that, that's. Is that, is that got any, anything to do with controlling these things? No. So that essentially is how you pay for population health. Is that they give the gatekeeper, so to speak, yep. the primary care, the hospital, extra money 
to keep them healthy. And now they're going to see if it's worth it. It's like $2 per month. But the <laughs> hope is to experiment, to pay for care coordinators, to pay for Vicky. Yeah. Um, but, but $2 per month for the population you look after. Put it simple. You've got millions of healthy people. That's good business. You can yes. make the, those $2 It's risk per adjusted. Yeah, but you can make those $2 per month go a long way. That's a lot of dollars. Correct. But that's an, an ongoing experiment. It's a bit like Maryland and opting into bundles. It's, yes. Yes. So, for example, we have um, we take care of millions of patients at Penn, but we're responsible for a hundred thousand lives. Right. That's it. No. <laughs> Not the millions that come through our doors. And I've got one last, if I may, as we. All right. I wrote down here. Med Pack votes fourteen to two to junk MIPS. What 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 does that mean? So, Congress set up an independent body to advise them on payment. It's called MedPAC, the Medicare Payment Advisory Committee. So, the uh, for the U.S. listeners, we had a fa- uh, a formula to decide how doctors would be paid that had a fatal flaw in it that essentially caused every year for doctors to be paid less and less till it got to 21% cut, right. which nobody would accept. So every six months, they said, we'll fix it, but for six months. So finally, they said, we will fix it for good because things were going so well. They thought they could spend the amount of money it would cost to permanently fix it. But in exchange, the physician groups had to give up something, and that was being more responsible in the quality domain. So that was MACRA. Um, and what's MACRA? MACRA that sounds like a, a, an online shopping thing. No, it's <laughs> uh, or a I'd supermarket ha- from you know. That's uh, because macro, you sorry. asked me, <laughs> yeah. it, it's an acronym for the law. Okay, the law. So for the law that fixed the the reform that right. fixed that was the doctor fix. Okay. And MIPS, which is the measurement incentive program that essentially was inside MACRA that said we are going to pay doctors a higher and higher percent on value based on measuring you and seeing if you've done well. So the problem is. So, so, they, so, what, so junked that? They said they don't like the idea that you incentivize. Quality high quality care. care? Have I? So the problem is that we had hoped that the measurement would be tied to what the doctors do. Okay. But the way they do this is based upon the uh, tax ID number of the group. Hmm. So if I'm at Penn, I am part of 18 departments. Right. So as long as I do any measures relevant to any of the 18 departments, which could be family medicine and internal medicine, that I don't have to measure anesthesia outcomes. All I have to do is measure something within those 18 departments. So the surgeons were not measured for surgical outcomes. On top of that, if you don't do enough Medicare cases, you don't have to actually submit. On top of that, if you're in alternative payment models, you don't have to submit. So it's not that they don't think incentives make a difference. It's they think that the way they implemented the program is has such problems, essentially they're not getting the outcome they want. They still think incentives are important. It's more the way they implemented it. And quality so, of care is, of course, is important. Yeah. <laughs> so what's it being replaced by? Nothing yet. Okay. It's still inta- intact. Mm-hmm. So this is not Congress no, actually right, did it. It was a group of... Yeah, group of surgeons. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Fleischer, Vicki, Monty, thank you so much for joining us at the end of day one. And uh, end of day one of EBPOM. Any final thoughts, Lee, for today? No, it was a fantastic meeting. And the exciting part about EBPOM is that we're really driving quality of care for patients. And the exciting thing is our panel started mm-hmm. with the patient. Mm-hmm. And the way the British did, uh, approached it. And my talk was really in that system. Mm -hmm. How can you use different payment models to afford to make that change? Not how do we go after payment and then follow it with patients. And I think that's the right order. It's all about the patient. Top then talk. 
So that piece is taken from a longer conversation, which you'll be able to find if you go to topmedtalk.com. And if you do go to topmedtalk.com, you'll also have a chance to sign up for our email updates. It's an essential way, really, for us to keep in touch and to tell you when we are live streaming from the website. So if you're not part of that, you're not yet fully part of Top Med Talk. They're entirely free and they keep you in touch with your favourite medical podcast. Also, of course, I mentioned before, we're looking for audience feedback on the question of funding healthcare. It's a big issue and we'd like to know your thoughts. Contact at topmedtalk.com. Contact at topmedtalk.com. Tell us whereabouts in the world you're listening and send us your point and then potentially hear your thoughts on a future edition of Top Med Talk. Also, of course, you can meet the Top Med Talk team. All you need to do is go to the EBPOM website, ebpom.org. That's ebpom.org forward slash meetings. Once you're there, you'll find a list of all of the events that we will be in attendance at. Our next big event is between the 28th and the 30th of September in Chicago. That's EBPOM USA, the Chicago Masters course perioperative care practicum between the 28th and the 30th of september ebpom.org for more details that's ebpom.org